Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our midweek service. Good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. Are you glad to be here? Say amen. 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 Me too. It's good to see everybody here. Good to be able to come and on such a pretty day. It's been beautiful today, hasn't it? Spring fever has struck us all, but that's a good kind of sickness to have spring fever. Good to see everybody here in place and uh, have some new prayer requests. I want to get those where I won't forget them and put them right here. Anybody new? I don't think so. No. All right, we're going to be doing some singing and we'll get to that just briefly. Look over your announcements and see if there might, might be something there you haven't seen before or you might be reminded of something you knew, knew about already. It's um, full of good things and try to participate how and when you can. We want to thank everybody for coming out for the work day and you have a note there that uh, reminds us of the appreciation for all the volunteers and uh, I didn't get the exact count, but I did get a rough count. Over 50 total were here uh, last Saturday. And um, if you didn't make that one, rest assured, you'll have a place in May. We're going to have another work day. And it was just such a good day of fellowship. It really was. We, uh, we had fellowship as we worked. The old saying is what? Whistle while you work? Well, I didn't hear anybody whistling, but we were having a sweet fellowship while we worked and uh, many hands makes light work as you've heard and so it was really good got a lot of good things done and uh, for the Lord's honor is what uh, it was all about other things here I don't think there's anything new uh, here but just reminders of important things and you're always welcome to the men's Bible study, men, and the ladies' Bible study, always. These are just uh, continuing Bible studies, and you can jump in. And even though we are in a certain study, pretty much every study, at least I can speak for the men, is a standalone study, and you'd be most welcome to come. We are going to turn our attention now to the memory verses, the focus verses for the week. You have those on your handout, and in case you are maybe thinking, well, where's the rest of it? There is no rest of it. This is it. So you have the Reader's Digest edition tonight. Shorter notes, which does not necessarily mean a shorter message, but probably will be. <laughs> probably will be uh, truth of the matter is I was just running short on time and sometimes that'll happen to you and it snuck up on me today and I had done some study but I did not get the notes typed out and so that's all you have but we'll be looking at some passages and I'm sure we'll have a good time in our study look at the memory verses all from John and all having to do with our Lord and his love for us. Well, there could be many, many verses on this. John 14, 2, and I might uh, add before I read, these are from the King James. I made a mention of the, the way it was uh, written in our bulletin, and that was from the um, English Standard Version. Well, I thought um, we might just do the King James tonight, not that the English Standard Version was wrong, but that this is the familiar, for many of you, uh, reading of the scriptures. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And that word mansions, as you can see there, 
is the word that I referred to if you were here Sunday night and uh, tried to make that clear because the ESV has the word rooms. In my father's house are many rooms. And the actual meaning of the word is dwelling places. And the idea underlying that is a permanent dwelling place. And the way that I always remember it, some of you are familiar with the Presbyterian way of doing things. I think you are. You probably have family members or at least friends. You probably have heard this word manse. You ever heard that word manse? That is a Presbyterian word for parsonage. I think that's the Baptist word of choice. We had a parsonage in West Tennessee. But in Presbyterian life, it's called a manse. And a manse is similar to a mansion. And the idea in both those words is a dwelling place. Now you have your word lesson for the night. So many mansions. But the idea, I will stress again, is not a mansion that we would think of like um, Biltmore. That, that is the idea in a lot of our gospel music. But we base our understanding on God's word as best we can understand and interpret it. And so I think it's good for us to know. And it's even a better idea when you think about the Father's house, like we might say a, a built more, and we have an abiding place in that. So it's really a closer fellowship idea than having a mansion all to our own and that kind of idea. So anyway, John fourteen six, what a verse. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And then John fourteen eighteen, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And you may remember, or you might be looking at the bulletin even now as I'm speaking, it read something along the line, I will not leave you as orphans. So that is along the line of comfortless without anyone caring for you because he would come to us in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let's bow together in prayer and then Josh do you have a mic down there? You got your mic. We're glad you're here to lead us. Yeah and feeling better? Good. All right let's bow together for prayer and then we'll ask Josh to lead us and sing it. Thank you, Pastor Stan. Church, if you'll please rise with me, let's worship the Lord together with the singing of the hymns. Our very first song this evening, hymn number 508, one I've not done in quite some time, Love Lifted Me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, and safe am I. Love lifted me. me when nothing else could help love lifted me love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted All my heart to Him I give, ever to Him I'll cling. In His presence love ever His praises sing. 
love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best songs faithful loving service to to him belongs love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me souls in danger look above jesus completely saves he will lift you by his love out of the angry waves he's the master of the sea billows his will obey he your savior wants to be be saved today love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me amen what a great old hymn i've met Admittedly, I have an old uh, Southern Gospel upbeat version of that in my head for years and I haven't sang that version, so I enjoyed that. Hope you did. Our next uh, hymn of worship, 591, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. <clears throat> Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will, while I am waiting. Yielded and still. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord. Wash me just now, as in thy presence, humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold o'er my being. Absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit till all can see. See clearly always living in me. Amen. Remain standing for our final hymn of worship this evening, hymn number 295, Tell Me the Story of Jesus.
Tell me the story of Jesus Write on my heart every word Tell me the story most precious Sweetest that ever was heard Tell how the angels in chorus Sing as they welcomed his birth Glory to God in the highest Peace and good tidings on earth Tell me the story of Jesus Write on my heart every word Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Tell of the cross where they nailed him, writhing in anguish and pain. Tell of the grave where they laid him, Tell how he liveth again. Love in that story so tender, clearer than ever I see. Stay, let me weep while you whisper. Love paid the ransom for me. Tell me the story of Jesus Write on my heart every word Tell me the story most precious Sweetest that ever was heard Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Miss Nancy, Miss Mary, and Brother Josh. Thank you all for leading us in some beautiful music and helps us in singing. Those uh, songs go way back for me, and I think for most of you who've been in church, all your lives, and I think that's most of us, if not all of us, those are ones that we have been singing for a long, long time. And I take it, Josh, you're familiar with those, and I also am assuming y'all probably sang those in your Presbyterian church growing up. And so here, it all occurred to me, here your church was not far from Virginia Avenue Baptist Church. Yeah, just on up top of the hill there in the uh, it's kind of a border between Fairmount and Willie Boone. You Bristolians know what I'm talking about. And I guess that'd be Fairmount more, wouldn't it? Yeah, right there. But uh, that's something how didn't matter. Uh, whatever denomination. Back in those days, a lot of churches sang the same songs. And those have stuck with us. And I love all of those songs. They're meaningful songs. Not to say the ones we sing now are not. No, certainly not, but it's good to sing those familiar ones as well as the newer ones, I'll say that. And that last song uh, goes right in line with what we're dealing with on Wednesday nights. We've been looking at the ministry of Christ, the person of Christ, and tell me the story of Jesus. That's what we've been doing in certain aspects of his character and ministry and all he did and all that we know about him in scripture, we kind of compress that into some lessons and adventure club lessons, we call them, same as our boys and girls and teenagers are studying, and we'll get to that here in just a few minutes after our prayer time. So, let's turn our attention to our prayer sheet, if you would please, and I will give you some updates, and we'll go to prayer. 
so important that we have this prayer time as a church, and I'm so thankful for all of you who uh, feel like it's important enough to be here. I know that you want to come and worship, you want to come and study the Word of God, but I also know that you're here because you know it's a prayer meeting, and we share requests, and you want to know, and you want to be in prayer for those that are in need and for changes as we are able to share them together. So we'll do that. Of course, salvation, that's always on our list, and the names are on the back side of the sheet. Please continue to pray for the lost and know that your prayers are a part of God's means of blessing in salvation in their lives, just like the preaching of the Word and uh, teaching in the classroom and the singing of the songs with the good gospel message and then the prayers of God's people. All of that, all of those ways are instrumental, are they not, in the salvation of souls. So let's not forget that as we pray for the lost as well as our witnessing and sharing and other means. We won't leave those out either. Government and military. You have the list there before you. No changes. No additions. Um, I don't think I've mentioned to you, come to think of it, I will mention this as an update. Um, and if I have done this in a previous week, um, I don't mean to overdo it, uh, but I wanted to make sure I'd, I told you uh, Dustin and Sarah and family are going to be relocating. They're moving from Chesapeake, Virginia, in the Norfolk area, and they'll be relocating to Pensacola for a three-year assignment. They thought up in Chesapeake was going to be a three-year assignment, but they found out about a week ago that that's not uh, the case. So thank you for your prayers as they get settled in and uh, readjusted. Uh, it'll probably be harder, as Sarah has said, and as we've been thinking no doubt, for the older girls who are developing close friendships and the small children too. But you know when you have teenage friends and you begin to really plug in and then have to uproot, that's one of the hard, harder things about uh, military life. So we pray that they can uh, find them a good church in Pensacola. They were there briefly in the beginning part of Dustin's career. So they may go back to that church or... The Church of God's Leading, and thank you for all your prayers for them during this time. Also, uh, looking down the list, I'll bring you up to date on the changes in our hospital and following. The church reminders are the same, nothing. Um, there except to draw your attention to it and please ask or ask for your prayers please in that um, continue to pray as you're praying for the church uh, for our finances it's uh you know i've been pastor here for going on 20 what six years and this has been the strangest last couple of years i can recall about finances because what we are seeing is a very erratic kind of, you know, sometimes it dips below budget needs and then it will go above. I think I said something last Sunday night about what a good offering we had and it was noted Sunday a, a week ago, that is, it was in the bulletin and you may have noticed that and I wanted to make sure, that's why I drew attention to it and it was well over our budget needs, which is very encouraging, but then we found out from this past Sunday that we were about that much below budget, and so it's one of the lowest we've had in in months. So I don't know. We've got the 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 dips. You know, if you ever play golf, you you call it uh, you call it a divot, and sometimes you get too much of a divot, you know, and you don't hit the ball. <laughs> <laughs> they call it a chili dip is what they call it. if you ever play golf. But, so that's kind of what we had this past Sunday. 
And it's not a laughing matter, and I, I apologize. I'm not trying to make it a, a humorous matter. It's a very serious matter that I ask you to pray for our church family to be faithful in our giving. That's what every member and every family needs to do, period. So let me move on. Hospital list. Um, we want to update you on the names of Pam McCarthy and Polonia Schuler. Am I pronouncing that right, Matt? It's Poloma. I'm sorry. P A L O M A. All right. So the spelling of the last name is correct? O oh, S C H. S C H U. There's no E in there. Okay. Well, we really butchered Paloma's name. I, I am sorry about that. Thank you for the update. Could you all hear that over here on this side? Could you hear those details? This is an 18-year-old uh, girl and a friend of the Darby family, Matt, and others, I'm supposing, in the family. And uh, happened out in California, is that right? And um, this 18-year-old had a stroke. And he says she will be discharged Friday the 15th, is that correct? Yes. And doing, doing well. And we'll be having some rehab, yes. able to walk and all that. Well, that was uh, shocking when we found out about that. And uh, glad to hear that things are, are looking good there as well. Uh, and the discharge news, that's, that's wonderful, Matt. Thank you. Matt had shared that in Sunday school. And uh, the misspelling there, you can trace that back to a certain pastor teacher and I was up there writing down as Matt was sharing and so I didn't quite get that one right for the correct spelling and I'll give it to you one more time Paloma P-A-L-O-M-A Schuler S-C-H-U-L-L-E-R correct yes. all right thanks for that update hospital also um Pam McCarthy, this is Elizabeth Deal's first cousin who has been diagnosed with lung cancer. Pam will have 30 radiation treatments to shrink a mass that is pressing on her heart. Very sorry to hear that. And that is a very serious condition for sure. Pam McCarthy, that's Elizabeth's first cousin. Now back to Matt's family. This time family, not friend. Molly, in case you had not heard, Molly is on the list here. Let me make sure I'm finding it on the, the yes, over on the right-hand side of home list, third line down. Molly had a seizure yesterday morning before school. Uh, Linda was combing her hair and about a two-minute long uh, seizure. They took her to the ER. Um, EMS came, and so we got word of it from Myrna called, and you know, just shocking news. But thankfully, she came back and came out of it. And um, they did several tests in the ER, 
and they're going to do further testing, are they, Matt? And she went back to school today. So if that news just came to you, I know it's shocking to hear it. So I'm just kind of going slow with that so you can sort of process that. So thankful that uh, she's all right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, in Adventure Club tonight. That's good. Going to have a follow-up brain scan is uh, what is going to happen this week or soon. Okay. 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 Well, they must not feel like there's any real uh, immediate need for it or they would... Good. No swimming and no no baths. Oh, I got you. Okay. All right. Well, all right. Well, you do what you have to do. That's precaution, right? So relieved that everything was all right yesterday. Amen. Amen. That's good. We're thankful for God's blessings. Amen to that. Yes. Yeah, that circulated as soon as we could get it on the prayer chain, and some of you already knew about it. So thank you for your prayers, and we give utmost thanks to the God we have and his faithfulness to us answering that and he's going to be answering prayers according to his will for these others that we're praying for and have been praying for too Uh, another few home updates uh, for your information Uh, Tim Davis a prayer for the doctors to have wisdom about his heart Doc and Nancy's son we've been keeping you updated on continue to pray for him and uh, Jason Gilreath was not here He's been having uh, some uh, digestive uh, system issues, and uh, he is improving. Is he here tonight? Can somebody verify? Is he here, Jason? Not, not here? Still not feeling well? My goodness. Well, still having some issues. But it, a little bit improved, and that's where, where we got. Yeah, okay. More testing in the future? Not sure. Yeah, okay. We'll keep you posted. If there's anything we need to pass on uh, about Jason, we'll do it on the prayer chain. Thanks, uh, Tracy, for the information. Uh, Donna Mabe is still recovering from a sore throat improving I take it Martha that's good yeah yeah well I'm glad she's improving yeah we appreciate that Todd Smith has been in the hospital. Uh, He had a touch of pneumonia. I'd say it's probably more than a touch, but it came on all of a sudden and uh, very painful, he said. And uh, I got to see him yesterday, and he was supposed to have been discharged, and we did not receive confirmation. But uh, did we, Nancy? Did we ever? We got him on the home list based upon what he was told before our visit. He was supposed to go home yesterday. Nobody can confirm. So continue to pray for his strengthening and full recovery. And you know he has a time anyway getting around and the cancer uh, that uh, causes pain uh, in or on his spine, his spinal area, we'll say, and... uh, He really has been struggling of late. But you know, he's here most of the time. 
And you just kind of want to parade him in front of people and say, you know, this guy can do it. You know, we ought to be in the Lord's house when we can because he really is a trooper and uh, loves the Lord, Todd Smith. All right, uh, homebound, uh, those are the only one. Well, no homebound, the uh, shut-in. They have it listed here on this sheet, homebound, but it's actually shut-in on your list that you have. And uh, no changes there. Um, let me again remind you about Charles Worley on the home list. This is Dustin's grandfather. He is at home, but he is under hospice care. And Dustin and Sarah are planning to come in this coming Monday, but they're kind of sitting on go if he were to pass. They're hoping to get back for one last visit before that time. So they'll be in next week, and uh, we're looking forward to having them for a few days. Now moving on, uh, Pat Osborne passed away, former member here, and uh, C.A. had passed her husband a few years before, and uh, so the funeral services were uh, on Monday, and uh, Josh was there, uh, the Weaver family uh, served them well, and uh, thank you, Josh, for your kindness for the family. And uh, Jack, it's the first time I knew that Jack was serving with you all. Former police officer Jack Necessary is now working up there with the funeral home staff. And it was just a, it was open to the public, but it was more or less a, a family and friend gathering. And got to see some folks from Liberty that had worshipped with us uh, through the years, uh, Let's see, uh, Johnny and Phyllis Campbell, you remember them, don't you? Johnny and Phyllis, some of you, I see you're, you're nodding. And then uh, uh, Jackie and Trula Puckett were there, and you remember Jackie and Trula. So it was a, a mini Liberty reunion and uh, a, a, good, a good fellowship at that. So, yes, Rosa. That's Brent's dad. Pancreatic cancer. Is he at home? So sorry to hear that. Yeah, let me repeat that. Uh, what she has said so far, I'll repeat for everybody because you can hear me better in all parts of the building. Nobody over here to listen. But... <laughs> Uh, Bill Schaefer, Brent's dad, this is uh, Rosa's son-in-law's dad, Brent Schaefer's dad, has pancreatic cancer. Anything else, Rosa, you want to add to? Okay. Sorry. Sorry to hear that. Very sorry. We'll keep uh, Bill in prayer. I'm just wondering if I've ever met him. I may have somewhere along the line. Brent and Missy, was their wedding was the first wedding I was able to conduct coming back to Bristol in 98. And they were, I think they were attending Tennessee Avenue, weren't they, at that time? And we had the wedding over there. But uh, we got back into Bristol and we hit the ground running with the wedding. In fact, before we had the first Sunday here, we had that good time there. And so I can always remember their anniversary and how long they've been married. That's good. Now let me share these other um, requests that were handed to me on request cards. And I appreciate that. And I'm able to share with you what they have jotted down here. Just got these before the service. Martha Worley's friend, sister, she has been on our nursing home list. 
the family of Glenn, Glenda Cook. So this Miss uh, Cook has uh, passed away, and uh, services tonight in Lebanon, Virginia, and a graveside service tomorrow. So we pray for the Cook family, family of Glenda Cook. And then Jack Davidson handed me this information. A friend of Jack's, Jimmy Doss, recently diagnosed with throat cancer, suspected to have spread to different areas, tests are forthcoming. He's in the hospital and starting chemo treatments, chemotherapy treatments. So we will add those to our list. Jimmy Doss, throat cancer, and the family of Glenda Cook. Sure. Correct, Tracy, sure. And he's overseas? That's understandable. Both ways it's understandable. Yeah. My goodness. I did not get the family connection to you. Do you want me to share that or Wesley Wilson is the name used to be Tracy's brother-in-law. He needs a liver transplant and he needs a donor. That is the issue, right? Is that right? Needs a liver donor for the liver transplant. And this is overseas. What part of the world? In Turkey. Retired military. And he's overseas. And... Apparently, uh, the time is limited, that he needs that urgently. All right. I'm sorry to hear that need. Thank you for sharing it, Tracy. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, we have a lot of needs, don't we? And we always do on Wednesday nights. And we're made aware of them on Wednesday nights, but we are aware of them all the time, that uh, we live in a world of need and in a church of need and families they have all kinds of needs and let's always remember that though most of our requests for whatever reason neither right or wrong it's just the fact most of our requests have to do with the physical there are also burdens of many different kinds let's remember that some are going through marital issues and some heavier that uh, we would want to imagine and then financial concerns several families as you might expect in this economy going through that kind of a need and uh, you know just a lot 
you can just add to that list, but there are a lot of, uh, of different kinds of needs and uh, a lot of crisis or challenging situations for people. And we all need guidance, don't we? We all need that and just so many needs. But we have a faithful father and one who is looking after us. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for the fact we can come and pray to you. We come with praise. We come with thanksgiving, Lord, for all of your blessings. We come in a spirit of Psalm 103 to say, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And so, Lord, we want to be mindful as we come to you tonight of all the blessings and all the benefits that we have. Blessings and wonderful things from you, both spiritually and physically. Blessings that we enjoy in this life and blessings that will never end in eternity. And so we have so much to be grateful for, grateful for your providence, how you're working in our lives behind the scenes, and all the details of life. We're blessed to have you as our guardian and our caretaker and our security, our rock, our shelter, and our sustainer, our provider, our redeemer, our creator, so many things in your word that you remind us of who you are and all you do and we stand amazed and we're humbled and we're grateful so thank you Lord and thank you for being our heavenly father and for Christ being our savior our redeemer as we thought about on Sunday morning and for the Holy Spirit being our ever present comforter and for his presence in our hearts to control us and guide us and teach us and all the things that he does moment by moment. Thank you for the songs that we've sung and we always sing songs that remind us of these things. And thank you that we're in your house tonight singing your praises, being reminded of your goodness and being able to sing praises with the meaning and the truth in our hearts, knowing of which we sing that these things are true and these things are precious to us. Thank you for hearing our prayers tonight, as always, and for prayers heard and prayers answered already this week since we last met for worship. Thank you so much for answered prayer, for knowing the needs even before we bring them. And then as we bring them, Lord, we feel such an assurance and confidence that you will Always do what's best and what's right. And again tonight, Lord, we would pray, Thy will be done in all situations and help us to rest in your will, whatever that may be. We never want to come in a spirit in any way where we come trying to bend your will to fit our wants and wishes. For one thing, we know we can't. And for another thing, it's very dishonoring to you. And so we want to come in a spirit of humility and a spirit of submission and simply say, thy will be done. Thank you for knowing what's the best to do and then always doing it in your time and in your own way. Thank you for answers to prayer for Molly this week, a special blessing to us that she pulled through that little episode yesterday and thank you for the caregivers and thank you for the good outlook that we've heard about since then and that she's back in the swing of things as we say and she's here tonight and back in school. Thank you so much for your blessing. Continue to bless her and we pray that she'll not have any more episodes like that. Please. We also want to thank you for being with the Osborne family as they laid Pat to rest and as they said their goodbyes and 
to know that she's with you in heaven, Lord. We're so grateful for that, to know her testimony, to know her life. And thank you for the hope we have of heaven. Thank you so much for the reality that she is now experiencing of being in your presence. Fullness of joy, as the Bible says, and pleasures forevermore, as the Bible reminds us. And to see you in all of your glory, Father, how wonderful that must be. And we long to be there ourselves. But continue to bless the family, Charlie and uh, his wife, Leslie, and the boys and extended family. Continue to bless them. And then also the request that we got here this evening of the Cook family, Glenda Cook family. We pray for them, Lord, that you would uh, also supply the grace needed during this difficult time. Lord, you've heard all of these names, and we want to go back through those simply to lift those up to you in honor of you and in memory of them, this friend of Jack's, Jimmy Doss, with throat cancer. We lift him up again to you. We pray, Lord, for uh, Pam McCarthy, Elizabeth's first cousin, and her needs. Please be with her, Lord, for the needs and blessings she has at this time. And Paloma Schuler, the 18-year-old who had a stroke, please help her in her recovery and rehab in that dear family. And Father, we also want to pray for Tim Davis, Doc's and Nancy's son. Pray that he might find some resolution to his heart issue and encourage him, we pray. He has ministry going on and we pray that he'll take the time needed to rest if that's what's required and that you'll supply someone to come alongside him and help him in the ministry there at his church. We also pray for Jason Gilreath and the time he's having with his problems. Pray that he can find a solution and get back to a normal and healthy life. We miss him and need him and, and pray for his blessing. And then Donna Mabe, we're grateful that she's recovering to a good extent and pray that she can recover all the way. Help her, please. Then Todd Smith, our dear Todd, help him in dealing with this pneumonia recovery and also with his ongoing problems with his spine and the pain that he lives with day in and day out, the difficulty walking. Lord, give grace to him for that and other needs with Candy and his family as they try to help him as much as they can. And Lord, so many others in our church family on our list here and perhaps unspoken requests, we lift those to you as well. And then a special prayer we want to lift tonight, Lord, for our Holston Baptist Student Conference. And we understand there are 14 going on that. And I think 12 of those are students. And we want to lift them up as they prepare to go I believe it's a week from Friday, and please uh, bless them as they prepare and then go, that that might be a wonderful experience of growing closer together and closer to you in hearing Bible messages that will enlighten them and propel them uh, along their way to live for you and uh, bear much fruit. We pray for Karis and Faith and Molly and Stella and Chelsea, and Mabry, and Lily, and Ethan, and Luke, and Nate, Xavier, and Isaiah, and Josh, and Mary as they lead. Please be with them all, and make this a wonderful time of fellowship, and all of these things we lift to you and pray in Christ's name, amen. Let's look at our Bible time outline and our scriptures be turning with me if you would to John 14 marvelous passage in God's word well 
Well, I guess it is going to be a briefer message tonight, isn't it? Yeah. The, the outline says that, and then the watch reading I just looked at is an exclamation point. Brief with a capital B. So let's read the scriptures. At least we can do that. And then it's a pretty easy outline. You can uh, look at it and it won't take long to read it. And then that will give you some guidance to think about these two primary truths uh, under the heading of Jesus loves his people. Well, we know that and we could go on and on about that. This could be a hundred part outline of what different ways he loves us. But the two primary ways we're looking at in this particular study and you have to focus it some way when you're dealing with a subject that big, is that the Lord loves us so that He's preparing us uh, a place to be with Him forever. He loves us so that He came to redeem us and ransom us so that He might bring us and make us fit to be with Him forevermore. That's ultimate love, isn't it? That is eternal love it began in eternity and it's going to continue on to eternity future so we're reading this scripture in John 14 about his preparation and uh, play, the, preparing the place and also implied in this is he is preparing us for this place let not your heart be troubled it says in John 14 1 you believe in God believe also in me and this is Christ who is speaking. If you have a red letter edition of the Bible, then you knew that. But I thought you knew that anyway. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way, ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let's read on further. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. The word sufficeth means that will be enough, that will be sufficient, if you just show us the Father. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Read on a little further, verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. We'll stop right there at verse 14. So here, among other things, he mentions is the preparation of a place in heaven the Father's house, as he calls it, for you. And the you there are believers, disciples especially. But all disciples, with the exception of Judas, uh, were believers. And uh, others who were false disciples, of course. But here in the context, he's speaking to the true believers. And uh, so... We are going, we're assured we're going to be with him 
forever. But in order to go to a prepared place we call heaven, that he calls the Father's house, we have to be prepared for that prepared place. And the preparation is uh, really stated very simply, as simple as you can find it anywhere in the Bible. When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. In other words, the preparation is to come to him. And when you receive him by faith and you submit to him as Lord, all of that's implied with his other teaching that he had given them, then we know him as the way, specifically the way to heaven. And uh, that was in answer to uh, Thomas's question. And I just happened to share this the other day at Pat Osborne's funeral. And uh, this was the scripture, same scripture we were looking at tonight. Uh, it wasn't the only scripture I shared, but I did sh share this particular scripture. And so let me share just a thought here that I shared with uh, those who were at the graveside. You know, it's one thing for someone to tell you that's the way you need to go. Say if you don't know directions, sometimes a person will do that, especially in the days before GPS. And if you didn't have a map and somebody that knew the lay of the land, you're out in the country and you stop, you see somebody and you stop and say, hey, do you know where so-and-so lives? Yeah, don't go down and so, and he'll point to the way. Well, that person does you a great service because he's a guide, right? We've all been in that condition at one time or another. But how much better is it if somebody says, come with me, I'll take you? That's a whole lot better, isn't it? And that's what Jesus is saying here, isn't it? I'm the way. I not only will show you the way, teach you the way, but I am the way, the truth, and the life. And there's no other way to the Father but by me. And that flies in the face of a whole world that believes as long as you're sincere, you'll be all right. Whatever religion you have, if you're good with it, he's good with it. Well, that's not what the Bible says. There is only one person and one way to heaven and one way to God the Father, and that is through Christ the Son. We have a great song along that line, don't we? Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. From there, we were going to go to John 17, I put the watch on, it's time's up. John 17 is the great prayer and a loving prayer as we've made known in the notes here. So you have loving preparation that the Lord has made for us and all of his people and then loving prayer for his own people. And I encourage you to read that because that is a prayer specifically for us. It is. In fact, he specifically goes out of his way, Christ does, in John 17, saying, I pray not for the world, but I'm praying for you. And I'm praying for those that will believe on me through your testimony, those who are yet to believe. And so it's a wonderful, wonderful prayer. It brings many things into view in that marvelous prayer. Let's bow again for prayer. Lord, we have not had a whole lot of time tonight to spend in your word, but that reading alone and thinking about the prayer in John 17 and what is taught there is such a blessing to our hearts. So help us to get back to these scriptures, to read and study on our own beyond what we've covered tonight, and we pray well beyond what we've covered tonight. And may we be familiar with these scriptures and their teachings and thank you for our Lord and Savior in whose name we pray tonight because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the way to, for us to have access to you through prayer. And we're so very grateful. We pray in his name now and always. Amen. Josh, come and lead us in one last song, would you please? Thank you. Is that brief?
That was brief, yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. Brief, yeah. Thank you, Pastor. If you stand for our hymn of invitation, Spirit of the Living God. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Melt me. said? Amen. Amen. Doc, let me bring you the mic. please. All right, Josh, he's got younger legs than I. He's making better time. Doc, if you'll lead us. Thank you, Father in Heaven, for loving us so. Thank you for giving us our Savior. Amen. And giving us the clear path, the way, the truth, and the life. And that we wouldn't be able to miss it. But yet so many are missing it. Lord, we pray for those on our prayer list who do not know thee. They have no hope and no help, no answer. And no matter what they think they have, Without thee, we have nothing. You said that. You said, abide in me, and I in you. For without me, you can do nothing. And that's true of us, Lord. We're helpless. Helpless to effect our world without the spirit of truth living in us. Lord, we pray for especially those near to us and dear who have physical problems that keep them from the work and the witness of your son. Especially, we ask you to be near to them to bless them we pray that you'll give us direction empowerment and blessing that we might serve you in our Lord Jesus name we pray Lord Amen Amen thanks for coming tonight